Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. Today, the government unveiled the midterm review of the foreign trade policy and address working capital issues and provide measures to arrest the declining shipments. Aimed at mid-course correction, the focus of the midterm review of the FTP is on policy measures to boost exports of goods and services, increase employment generation and value addition in the country. Of course, the review was slated to be announced on the 1st of July uh, together with the implementation of the GST regime, but the announcement was postponed to take into account feedback from the export sector on GST-related issues. The centre also allowed duty-free imports on exports of self-certification. The merchandise exports from India scheme or the MEIS incentives have been increased by 2% to 4% now. Government saying that the GST uh, would help push those exports growth. Uh, through the next 30 minutes, we'll uh, sift through the numbers, also get you the larger picture, What, in fact, a clearer picture of what this is indicating. Joining me on the panel today, we've got Mr. Ajay Dua, former Secretary of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. We have Mr. S.K. Sarkar, Executive Member of the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, Professor Gaurav Vallabh from the XLR Hello. at Jamshedpur, and Priyaranjan Dash, a senior journalist as well. Mr. Dua, if I could start with you. Um, the government, of course, saying that this was a push really for the GST and it's been good and this is going to be the best thing that has happened uh, for Indian exporters. Talking about the GST, probably yes, but in the long run. Mm -hmm. As of its short-term, near-term impact, like on economic, general economic activity in the country, it's been a bit, I would say, adverse. Okay. And that seems to have happened to exports as well. The Again, the similar causes as the demonetization earlier and now GST, that this is forcing one, all exporters, small or large, to go in for filing a whole lot of returns. Mm. GST 1, 2, 3, you know, a whole host of forms. If they have to claim the input credits which have been given, and as you know, on exports, it's zero. So they're entitled to it. Hmm. But in order to claim that, they have to do a host, host of things which they were probably not doing earlier. Okay. This would make for better GST compliance. But at, right now, they have this uh, kind of a, uh, call it a complaint or others, mm -hmm. that without our, one, you have increased the compliance load on us until such time as the, we comply with it including they are talking about even the GST network not being ready to take so many documents which they are required. Mm. Their liquidity is suffering yes. because the refunds to them have, have stopped. Mm. There, it is a question right now of liquidity okay. of the exporters, though in the long run they are certainly going to be beneficial like the GST's overall impact, mm. but in the short term, near term impact the there is disruption hmm. and that is what the foreign trade policy which we are going to be discussing yes. today was supposed to address hmm. and that was the reason as very correctly you mentioned that for three months the policy review was postponed yes absolutely and perhaps that's why they're calling it a mid-course correction because they are of course midterm review. Mid review and also a correction of sorts well, now with yeah, gst yeah. keeping gst in mind that's right. um, and you know anyway uh, mr sarkar there was no indication that there's going to be any any kind of an extravagant announcement at least uh, you know that was not the indication that we we're getting mr prabhu has been saying for the past few weeks that we will come out and he's been giving a small indications of what really we can expect uh, but you know the value the value of new incentives at 8000 crores and how the MAI is being increased by 2%, how are you viewing this? Well, you see, you, uh, incentives have been coming in bits and pieces all through. See, like the garment sector has been uh, given certain uh, incentives, uh, are including the state levies, the remission of the state levies. Then you have uh, uh, incentives which are uh, uh, ready for the ready-made garments, mm. because that's a, that's in the lab, la that's a labor-intensive industry, yes. and so is gems and uh, ju uh, jewelry. So that's that's where we are. So so it's 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 in bits and pieces that's happening. Obviously, GST was a factor, and uh, uh, the, they uh, instead of bringing it out on first of July, they they decided to wait so that uh, things could be could settle down a, a little. But right now, GST, I would be a little hesitant in saying that it's, it's not really up to the mark as it should be.
because okay. you have the forms like GSTR 1, 2 and 3. Now, unless and until all these three forms are filed, you cannot really do the matching concept of uh, uh, Mr. Dua referred to the, in, uh, the input credit, uh, input tax credit. Now, that cannot happen because, uh, uh, because uh, uh, the matching concept doesn't exist today. See, unless and until you file GSTR 2 and thereafter GSTR, GSTR 3, mm -hmm. it's, it would not be possible to, and so, so, so things are, are a little, a little, a little hazy right now. So, and the government is also saying that uh, they, they're going to give you uh, the, the refunds which are going to take place is based on GSTR 3B and, and uh, Table 6A also. And, uh, but they are saying that uh, there are a lot of mistakes which are being made, which is quite a possibility because it's a new act and it's yes. a mammoth act. Yes. By, uh, 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 the, so, those things are quite possible. But I suppose uh, uh, what is happening today is that the that the working capital requirements of the, of, of the exporter is, is, is getting blocked to a great, great extent. And uh, as, as we, we are not a, we, we're not a very capital, uh, 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 I mean, we do not have the capital resources to the extent, I'm talking about the financial resources, yes. to the extent which uh, uh, an industry requires. So those things are blocking our uh, 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 way to, the, to exports. And it is being reflected in the, in the exports which are taking place now in October, we went down. Hmm. And uh, uh, although uh, this, uh, 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 this trade of FTP that we're talking about, which is 2015 to 2020, and we're looking at something like 900 billion yes. uh, from 465 billion. Now that is, in, uh, whether it's in the realm of possibility or not, is uh, there's a bit of a doubt on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope we do because uh, I mean, if we achieve that, we'll be uh, uh, we'll be uh, uh, doing a great service to the nation. But uh, uh, and by the way, this includes goods as well as services. So it's not yes. just merchandise exports. Mm -hmm. So we, if we do that, so that will be a great uh, thing to happen. But uh, as of date, it looks a little uncertain. All right, all right. Is that the view that you were getting as well, Professor? Uh, also, you know, the sectors that uh, we seem to be, at least the government seems to be focusing on leather, textiles, that's, these are the sectors that perhaps were perhaps worst hit, uh, you know, when it came to demonetizing of, or for that matter, uh, GST as well. Uh, do you see that 2018 perhaps is going to be more positive? See, I don't think a direct relationship with the data of mm. export coming down with the demo or the GST. Because all over the world, this is the best time. Structurally, the world over, the countries and nations are moving at a growth rate, which we are not able to get that, whether it's a GDP growth or whether it is. It's a be in the last seven years, I can say this is one of the best time as far as the global uh, economy, especially the emerging economy is the way they are moving. Mm. So there are many reasons and especially when the exports coming down by 1% in the last month. So uh, uh, this, this review should take a holistic view. Okay. It's not about export. I think uh, we, we should talk about imports also. Yes. Uh, and the way uh, the imports are also rise, uh, going up and the the CAD, that's what we are, I, I was talking about, that the current account deficits, which was under control, is, had started, the, the deficit had started growing up. Hmm. So, uh, as per one of the uh, study, because you had uh, asked me about the textile and leather, the, uh, the Crisil had done one study and a theory of comparative advantage they had quoted. And the way we are losing to the very small nations like Bangladesh, we are losing majority of the clientele in the textile, the Philippines, Vietnam, and the imports are also growing up and imports not only of the high-end consumer products or high-end electronic products or which requires a mega investment, it, 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 small things like mm. uh, uh, something of uh, a, a statue or plastic or art or these, these, these imports are also growing up. So it's time to relook to the entire export and import, import comprehensively yes. and it's not only the 900 billion dollar in exports but I think more than that import should also be targeted mm. and how we can curtail down the import because the, the, the oil prices in last one month had increased by 12 percent. So uh, the current account deficits are going to have a real challenge and the way the GST, I think, now coming uh, come into the picture that the way GST had, had gave a lot of rebates to the small businesses and the revenue collection from the government is a, is a big thing. And the de deficit is also something which we have to achieve because all sovereign ratings are based on those deficits. So it's a, it's a, it's a 
a holistic view i think uh, this review policy might have taken okay. and i think more than export we should have a competitive advantage to to those areas which are our strong areas of export uh, i think we lost somewhere uh, trying to enter into those areas which are not our uh, uh, strong uh, focus points. Yes. strong points and mm. we ended into some areas uh, which are relatively less uh, advantageous for the country as a whole because we had a, a big labor force big labor market yes. and uh, unemployment numbers all these things so i think textile labor uh, leather and all other ancillary things which creates a lot of employment to with the export that 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 thing should be that has taken care of mm. by increasing two to four. But is it going to translate into higher exports and lower import? Uh, that is something which we have to see in the days to come. All right, it's interesting you bring in the labor angle to it because, uh, Mr. Dash, you know one of the thrusts has really been on focusing on exports. The reason why it was being focused on exports to generate employment. Uh, you know anything in this uh, review uh, that we've seen? Anything that has made an, a mention of this? Uh, and how is the second half going to look like, you know, heading out to 2020? Well, you have seen, as uh, has already been mentioned, uh, you know, exports from over $400 billion when the, uh, this long-term policy was announced in April uh, 2015. Uh, and with the target of doubling it, uh, more than doubling it to $900 billion, uh, exports have actually been coming down to less than $300 billion. Now, uh, so uh, what has been happening, of course, is this, the recent years haven't been good for world trade. But uh, as the professor just mentioned, uh, world trade is now picking up. And in fact, uh, uh, World Trade Organization has uh, revised the projection to 3.6% growth in world trade. And uh, economies like us, or competing economies in the same export market, like Vietnam and uh, Bangladesh, even China, hmm. they, uh, they, they are seeing a new, uh, uh, you know, there is an Asian resurgence in export growth. And we, unfortunately, after a blip, I would say, in uh, September of 25% growth, which was a good growth, uh, October, it's, it's fallen to, um, you know, there is a fall of 1.1% yes. in export growth. Now, that's, of course, been primarily uh, being attributed to the dislocation caused by GST. Uh, and we have already spoken about the, the immediate problem of uh, working capital getting locked up. And uh, to that, uh, the uh, review doesn't offer an immediate solution, though mm -hmm. there is a promise that from April 1st, uh, the government is going to introduce an e-wallet scheme mm. uh, whereby uh, perhaps it will facilitate, um, you know, the money, working capital, which is getting locked up. And since exporters operate on a thin margin, um, that will not hopefully happen after you introduce the scheme of e-wallet, okay. which uh, to my, um, I would imagine that uh, perhaps imports will be allowed uh, without the need of paying the duty of front for export production. And uh, then it can be uh, so, so that the question of refund uh, can be avoided. Okay. Now that will be, uh, other than that, the immediate incentive which has been given of uh, two additional percentage point in terms of both the mercantile export uh, from India scheme and the service, services from India scheme, mm. uh, those are good immediate relief that should provide some incentives okay. to the exports to, to pick up. Mm. The, you see, one has to see that at, at the moment, uh, opportunities are uh, opening up yes. in, in world markets. All right. We All should right. be able to cash in on that. And uh, to the extent that we do that, Considering that uh, now our export basket has also undergone a Absolutely. huge change. So it's, 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 it's understood that globally, of course, the, the slowdown that we saw, the sluggishness that we saw, uh, you know, everyone's rising above it. And we're seeing, of course, economies surging to a certain extent, especially as being pointed out in the Asian sectors as well. Um, uh, you were trying to make a point, uh, you know, when we're talking about... M yes. Yeah. What I wanted to point out is that current disruption is one issue mm. and that's the one which has probably caused this reviewed delayed review we need to talk about but then also the longer term issues yes the longer terms may be just the two and a half years which remain of the policy on the disruption issue 
if you would recall, Tracy, there was a demand of the exporters saying that till such time as the GST impact settles down, the yes. network settles down, the compliance issues people are able to get used to, the duty drawback refunds, duty drawbacks should be continued to be given till the end of 31st March. Mm. The government said no. Yes. All that's now being done, MEIP 2% increase mm -hmm. only for mm. labor intensive and small scale industries, is a way to compensate for the loss which has occurred there. Okay. But that's not good enough. What the exporters are demanding, and I would think that there is some basis for it, certainly as we discussed earlier, they are a bit apprehensive of getting into the network by mm. having to file all those returns, etc. Yes. That how do you address the liquidity issues? One demand of theirs, which needs to be considered, is that let the banks give them an advance, which is equivalent to what the GST refund they are entitled to. Mm -hmm. And it's a loan, bridge loan. Yes. When they get it from the government, they will pay it there. Government wants to subsidize the interest rate, etc. The government can look at it. In the case of duty drawback, the government used to subsidize it. Mm -hmm. The interest there was an interest waiver or a minimal amount of interest had to be paid for over. Similarly, I'm my suggestion is that for GST refund, yes, till such time as the thing settle down, conditional refund on the basis of the level of exports which were they were making in the previous year could perhaps be given to them by the government, because mm -hmm. which has the budget, because mm -hmm. the duty drawback has been withdrawn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. could continue to be given to them, yes. not by way of duty drawback, but as a G GST refund which they are claiming. Yes. And till such time as these tally, you know, GSTR 1, 2, 3, and That's the, right. all those kind of things tally. So what, we, what we are saying is that issue, GST on its own as a long term, it does seem like it's going to work. It does yeah, seem the government seems right. confident. Yeah. We did see the, G, the GDP as well bounce back a bit. And, you Absolutely. know, we seem to know that it is going to work in the long term. It's a stopgap arrangement so that the sufferers at the moment, they get, get some, some side relief. of solace. Some at the same of, time, the government absolutely. is assured that the money would come back. Yes. Then moving on, after Mr. Sarkar has mentioned it, I'd like to say what are the issues which need to be addressed for the remaining part of the policy, two mm -hmm. and a half to three mm -hmm. years, if we have to get anywhere close to right. the 900 million, billion target for exports. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yes, Mr. Sarkar. Uh, uh, two points. One was that uh, the government is flexible on giving 90% of the refunds immediately. And then they're going to look at the balance refund at a later stage, which I think is a, uh, is a great commercial uh, decision. Mm -hmm. Now, coming to when we, whenever we talk about, and this is uh, basically for the viewers, whenever we talk about foreign trade policy, obviously we'll have to look at the trade agreements which are in force today. Now, when I, I had a look at the number of uh, trade agreements that we have, and I could count up to 18, mm -hmm. out of them, three are with, 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 are with Nepal. One is with Bhutan, and then we have the CECA, which is the uh, Comprehensive Economic uh, Partnership Agreement and Comprehensive uh, uh, Economic Cooperation Agreement with Japan, with, uh, with the uh, Republic of Korea. We even have it with Sri Lanka, Malaysia, mm. also with Singapore. But it's a, my point, the point which I wish to place before the viewers is that this is a very, very limited field in which we are functioning. Okay. For, a, for a, such a large economy, like ours. Mm. We still have the uh, European FTA, which is still is a work in progress. With America, uh, with America, I mean United States of America, we, uh, we, are, we are targeting 500 billion, but we, what, the, the total trade which is being done is about 112 billion. Now that's, and, and, and uh, USA is a consumption country. Mm. So all these factors, unless and until we can push we would not be we would not be in a position to become to play a major role i mean we are aiming to become an economic superpower yes. so if we are to do that i think we have to give it a a, a bigger push than what it what is happening today mm. and uh, yes we have with mercosur also but then mercosur is brazil argentina uruguay and paraguay so <laughs> so so the field is as i i i, 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 I this is what i think i keep advocating is that this field has to be expanded yes. and expanded to a considerable extent and we would have to look at the developed countries mm. i'm not saying that 
we should not have good economic relations with our neighbors. Yes. But m the fact remains that you need to get value addition. After all, if you are in business, you need to maximize your 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 returns. Yes. So so th and the best way to do is to to do it with countries which are basically consumption countries. Mm -hmm. So that's something which we need to look at with very carefully and try and uh, uh, achieve. And I think in that case, the, the the target that you set becomes achievable. All right, and especially in a scenario where you have a China that's so economically aggressive yes. and it's obviously targeting new markets. Which are the new sectors, Professor? Do you think that we should be focusing on second half of this policy? See, China. China's export import and our export import, I think there is a, a big difference and we can't compare with them hmm. because they are basically in the capital formation uh, of the exports and whatever they are doing is having a more long term sustainability. So uh, we can enter into that model provided uh, we had that uh, kind of macroeconomic data whether uh, it's a current account deficits and whether it's a the the uh, foreign uh, currency exposures and the reserves which we are having so the areas i think in the current scenario in our country we can enter into more labor intensive areas and uh, for that mind it uh, we had every day we had a competition from the nearby countries and we can enter into the service export is also one of the area which is which was our strong point mm. we have to again capitalize that and uh, we have to come to the level that we can provide a new opportunities in the service exports okay so that is another area third agriculture mm. which is also which also which can also provide a, a a major revenue avenues to us in the days to come and the the value addition in the agriculture products and the way we can export the the, the value added product there is a, a there is a good market for that and if we are going to focus into these market uh, intensive and labor intensive areas we can uh, move uh, to a next level of the exports and maybe 900 billion dollar next two and a half year i think it's is relatively very difficult but if we can move to 600 in the next year and 700 to the next to next year we can achieve 900 billion dollars mm. all right i'm running short of just time to, just but to yes add to what the professor said you yeah. we we would have to look at niche products mm. so the niche products could be darjeeling tea it could be mysore sandalwood it mm -hmm. could be kanjivaram saris okay. it could be surat diamonds mm. so these are areas where we are we are we have the strength and obviously the competition is uh, 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 almost nil. All right. Basmati rice, maybe we have to compete with Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we are fairly... Uh, there I are think, certain uh, sectors where we are strong ours. and we the should focus yeah. on that. Uh, so, yes. so, so, yeah. I think what we have to be now looking at here are the sections in consumption goods, consumer goods, which China is vacating. Okay. China is moving up the value chain, but textiles, low technology items, you know, all kinds of consumer goods which come to India, mm -hmm. electrical mm -hmm. items mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. decoration plastic items toys. and plastic, yeah, exactly. Plastic so there is no market. reason yes. why we should be shy of capturing those. All right. yeah, and instead what we are doing is we are letting these go away to Vietnam, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Bangladesh, yes. which, are, which are now all recording almost 20% rate of growth. Mm -hmm. The way to go about it is of course government incentives, yes. but let's not start new schemes like coastal economic zones when which we haven't been able to take care of our special economic zone, export processing zone, hundreds of... All right, I need to get a word in from Mr. Dash, of otherwise he'll get upset with me. Please. Mr. Dash, very quickly, what is the, the signal really coming in for the next two and a half years? Next two and a half years up to 2020 and beyond, any foreign trade policy has to focus on two th uh, things essentially. One is competitiveness, and the other is market access. Mm -hmm. These are these must be the focus of any foreign trade policy. But both these things are beyond the scope of foreign trade policy alone. Okay. In fact, all other policies, the overall economic policies of the country and foreign policy, including foreign policy, have to be dovetailed into achieving these two things. Market access, yes. particularly in the services sector that uh, Mr. Saka and Professor was mentioning, where we we have to see areas that we are competitive in, or we have a potential to be competitive. Yes, we have to actually move away hmm. from so-called traditional areas and think in that traditional way. 
Yes. Because for for and years, look for where decades, the market is getting empty. Look at the decades, space that China is launched, perhaps leading to move ahead, so and that is perhaps the next signal that we'll be seeing. I'm sorry, Mr. Dash, I'll have to cut you there, but yes. that's all the time I have for the moment, gentlemen. Thank you. thank you so much for joining me on the big picture. That's all I have the time for. We'll join you again tomorrow with another topic. That's it for now. Thank you.